our name is quite purposeful when you start to think about story and lab, right? So story is the working with the best creative and the best technology and the best talent partners to create the best stories that are most valuable and relevant for the audience, right? Then you have the lab part, and that lab part is the data and insights that's meant to inform and inspire the ideas for telling the stories, right? And help us inform then how those stories get out to connect with the audiences that we're trying to connect with. So that's what's ultimately driving this whole shift, right? It is our own behavior, which we can look at, you know, ourselves, right? What do you have in your pocket or what's sitting next to you? And what are you doing while you're watching? You might be watching television, but you might be watching it on demand. You might be watching it from your DVR. You might be watching, doing something while you're on it, right? You might be searching for something. So the way that our behavior has changed, which is why that shift is fundamentally happening, but the thing that connects it all is the stories, right? Is the thing that you're most interested in doing. And those stories can entertain, they can inspire you, they can inform you, they can, you know, they can educate you. But this, the story that you're telling needs to come across platforms and that's why those dollars are shifting is we need to meet the way that consumers are changing their behavior to continue to connect with them through the stories that we create. So I think what's probably for me the most exciting is that I come out of the world of the not the beginning of branded entertainment. I mean, to be fair, John Deere and P&G started at branded entertainment 150 years ago. But I come from when branded entertainment sort of really landed into pop culture, right? So thinking about American Idol and working for Simon Fuller and working for Mark Burnett across all of his biggest shows like The Apprentice and Rockstar and Contender in a time when basically people were buying fans, right? So you would go out and you would come, I would come to you if you were an advertiser and I would say, hey, listen, you know, I've got all these fans, 36 million viewers a week on American Idol, and I've created this platform for you, do you want to buy it? But now, I understand that you are a brand, and here's the audience you want to talk to, and now I can actually still think about ways to leverage those platforms, but leverage them to the audiences that I want to talk to in a different way, because I have all these insights and data at my disposal that allows me to tell a totally different story that actually means something. So I'm not cluttering up you know, I, I think search and social are the best things that ever happened to storytelling, right? Because frankly, the first thing when you are inspired by something, you go and search for it, right? And the thing when you want to share something, you go to social, right? So storytelling in the context of the world we live in allows people to be ambassadors for your stories. And that for me is, is fueled by insights, right? Allows us to create stories that people actually want to tell and care about and want to share and want to search for and that want to actually lean into whatever it is that you're talking about in a way that is exciting for them in one in one form or fashion and I think that has revolu you know I've again been in this business I started out when there was no search and social really right to speak of and now where we are and the opportunity that gives us and if we're smart about it we can do it really really well and actually create real business results which is also really exciting well, I think, you know, the way that we think about influencers, right, in, in, in the traditional, so there's influencers like celebrity talent, which you're more familiar with, which still tends to follow what I would call a more traditional model. But working with influencers as we know them today, like creators, YouTube, Vine, et cetera, Instagram, all of those different types of creators, they are real people, right? They started, and the reason they're so appealing to people is because they're real people. They have an authentic voice. They're credible. They care about what their audience thinks. And you have to go into, if you want to work with one of those people, you have to go in just remembering that every at every turn, right? Like, I think that um, brands, to your point, like throw more money at them, right? They are not a distribution channel, right? They are a way for you to get to tell your story in a, sl in a different way, through a different lens, but through a lens that's quite authentic to the people that you ultimately want to reach, right? And as a vehicle for that, you have to be respectful of how they do that and, and their own creative license. And, you know, having worked with a lot of executive producers, right, the, some of the most famous creators of formats and storytelling in the world, right, that having walked that line so consistently, it's a pretty natural evolution for, for someone like me and for our company, because our company is made up of those types of people. Um, and so that is our role, right, is to help the brands understand you can't just throw more money at them or you can't just tell them that this is what you want them to say or this is how you want them to do it. It's not a, it's not a commercial. This is an actually that you want them to take what it is and make it their own so that people will actually embrace it. And that has been, it's an ongoing education, right? It's just like every piece of branded content that you produce. At the end of the day, 
oftentimes, you know, there's this tendency, this tension always to try and make it into an ad-like ad object, right? And some things lend themselves to that, but off, most often the influencer world does not lend itself to that. It has to be something like when we did the best day ever. People that we worked with were genuinely excited to actually give surprises away, right? That is something that it comes natural to all of us. You need, they did it in the way and made it their own, and they talked about it in a way that they made it their own. We gave them the platform and the opportunity to do it, which, is, which was our responsibility and sort of a construct by which, like, please don't disparage the brand. Um, but they, it was, in, it's, you know, that optimism, that, that natural gift of wanting to make people happy came through in the way that they created the content themselves. And that is what ultimately is you have to deliver as for working in working with influencers is give them the platform and the creative license and the, and the, what I'd call the parameters or the boundaries, right? And let them go.